Hi everybody, so today we are going to look at genetic crosses in terms of pictures um, that come up, especially with linkage and sex linkage. So this is going to be the first video and I'm going to do another video shortly after this. So for now we're going to look at our 2019 question 11c and we're given a diagram here and we're given the phenotypes, the key, that's great. And so let's just go straight to the, um, to the, the question. So question one is asking us, what are the genotypes of the parents for both sex and haemophilia? Okay, so whenever this comes up, guys, we're always thinking that males are always going to be XY. Now, there is a few exceptions, but we'll get to those later on. And females are always going to be XX. Okay, great. Okay, so that's the, um, that's the sexes there. So we have our male there and um, females there. Now we know automatically nothing goes on the Y chromosome because it's too short for the haemophilia or for, um, for red-green colour blindness, both of which are sex-linked and recessive. So let's have a look at the parents here. So the circle here that's half shaded in is a female and she's a carrier. Well, if this is the case, that female has to have a capital N and a lowercase n because we're dealing with Ns. And carriers are always heterozygous. Okay, now let's look at the, um, the square, which obviously is the male there. And it's not filled in at all. So we have um, the, the male here being normal. So that must mean the male has to have a capital N here. There are no other options. Okay, so that's the genotype there of both the parents, the male versus the female there. Okay, um, for question one. Now... Question two, what's that asking us? Now, question two is divided up into two parts. Okay, so the first part is, if person seven, so seven, has a carrier daughter, give the phenotype and the full genotype of the daughter's father. Okay, so let's just divide this bit up a small bit. Okay, so if person seven has a daughter, so let's just write out the, um, the genotypes for the parents, and then we'll do the offspring now in a second. Okay, I know my writing is desperate. Um, so seven here, circle, normal female there. Okay, so you write out your X, and I'll get rid of that there for a second. X, X, okay. Now, you're told that she's not a carrier, that she's normal, so that means she's homozygous, Dominant. And we know the father goes over here and there's an X, Y, and nothing goes into Y chromosome. Okay, the offspring is a daughter, so that's XX. And the daughter is a carrier, so that means she's a heterozygous, so capital N, lowercase n. Okay, so this is sex linked because these um, genes are located on the, um, on the sex chromosomes. Now, Give the phenotype and full genotype of the daughter's father. So we're looking for this one over here. Now, if we're looking at it there. This X capital N here can only come from the mother. Because if you look at this X small N here, it's not up here. Okay, it's something like spot the difference. So this capital X, X capital N can only have come from the mother. Well, by that um, logic, that must mean that the X over here has to have a lowercase n. Because that's where this X N came from. Okay, lowercase n. So therefore, we have the genotypes now of the father, and now we're asked to find out what the um, write out what the the phenotype is. So male, and we have an X and a small n there. So male and hemophilia, and that's it. Okay, um, male and hemophilia. Now, that was for part I there. Okay, so we have I done. Let's look at part two of um of question two there. Okay, and let's see. The question reads: What's the chance of the couple having a carry a daughter? Well, if they're going to have a daughter, okay, and we're going to assume that it's either between a carry a daughter and a non carry a daughter. Um, well, it's actually going to be a hundred percent that the daughter will be um will be a carrier. The reason being is, if you think about it, so you have to do 100% there. Okay, if you think about it, there is no other options that could happen. Like this X small n here has to go over here. 
and likewise this x capital n over here has to go down here okay and there's no there's no other options okay so that's why we have a hundred percent there okay for the um for the daughter so she's 100 percent going to be a carrier so look i hope that helps with that part of the question we're going to do one more now um and that's going to be this one over here okay so we have 2015 question 10 um and if we're reading it it says unlike the situation in birds or sorry humans maleness in birds results from xx and female results from xy particularly for bird species we have a green plumage here is dominant to yellow and long tail is dominant to short tail okay and we're told that there's linkage here okay the color is linked to tail length which we can see over here um study genotypes and in your answer book match the correct genotype to each of the descriptions from i to vi so i to vi there so each one of these descriptions relates to a letter over here from a to e okay before we start write out a little key here i can't stress out how important this one is okay it's so easy to mix these up so xx equals male and xy equals female there's three cases where this is the case where they're swapped where male is the female genotype and the female is the male's genotype okay and that's for birds butterflies and moths higher level students need to know all three okay let's start off so the question reads a female there that is heterozygous for color and tail length okay so let's look for the females there for x y's so this is female we have a female here and we have a female here so which of those are heterozygous well we can see here that this is actually homozygous dominant so obviously that can't be can't be the option and if we look at d there we have this homozygous recessive now so d obviously isn't the option so therefore e has to be the answer which makes sense because if you look at it there you can see we have a capital g there we have a lowercase g you have a capital l there you have a lowercase l so it is actually heterozygous so excuse me we'll write down e over here part two a male that can only produce one type of gamete okay same business again guys highlight the males so males is xx and keep looking back at that key to be sure to be sure now can only produce one type of gamete and well if it's only one type of gamete that male has to be homozygous okay either recessive or dominant but it has to be homozygous and let's look at a we can see for a here that it's actually heterozygous okay so a is no good so therefore the answer must be c and that actually makes sense because it is it's homozygous and to be precise it's homozygous dominant so c is our answer for um, part two part three the individual that can produce the greatest number of different gametes well if this is the case it has to be heterozygous guaranteed and it has to have the xy chromosome okay because if it's heterozygous i'm uh, sorry if it's xy chromosome this can give off two types of chromosomes whereas the um, xx chromosome can only give off one type okay so you're going to get more um, options with the xy than you would for the xx okay so let's just highlight our x um our xy's so we have here and we have it here and we have it here as well and we're looking for them as heterozygous so b is not heterozygous d is not heterozygous e is heterozygous so e is going to be the answer there that would give off the most amount of gametes okay iv a male all of whose offspring will have long tails okay so we highlight the males there so the males being xx so that's a and c now long tail is capital l over here is dominant so we're looking for something that's homozygous dominant okay so is a homozygous dominant it's not it's heterozygous so that's not our answer and C, we can see C is homozygous dominant in respect to color or a color tail length. So C is our answer for down here. Let's look at V now. A female, all of whose offspring will have a green plumage there. Well, it's the same business again, okay? The female has to be XY. Okay, we'll do that first maybe. And we can see green there is um is uh, dominant so we're looking for something that's a homozygous dominant and if that's the case b is our answer for that that's the only one there that is homozygous dominant we'll 
writing B down here. BI, a male that is homozygous in respect to colour and tail length. Highlight the males, so the males being XX. And it's homozygous in respect to colour and tail length. It doesn't state which is homozygous dominant or recessive, just that it's homozygous. But if we're looking at A, A can't be tanstral because A is heterozygous. You've got a capital G there and you've got a lowercase g. You've got a capital L there, a lowercase l. So therefore our answer has to be C. So we write in our answer C for down here. Okay. In the next one, in your answer book, write out the genotypes to meet that bird D can produce. So if that's the case there, we go up to bird D, which is over here. Okay, and we write out our genotypes there. And we have an X and a Y there. And we have a G, G and an L, L. Okay, well our only options here are going to be X and a G and an L. Circle it and an X and a G and an L because those lowercase G's and L's are linked. Um, sorry, that shouldn't be an X there, it should be a Y. Okay, they are not, however, sex linked. Okay, so you just give them a little bit of space between the the Y in the GL and the X in the GL. I think you leave it like that. And that concludes that, so guys. There's not much more to it. Um, you have to just double check everything. Make sure you put down the key. And um, yeah, that's it. So look, I hope you um, took something from that. And um, I'll be doing another one of these videos fairly shortly.